Welcome to the Video Show 2019, formerly known as the GV Expo. My name is Todd Clark. We are at Booth 300 in a huge convention center display of technology and creativity and vision and ways people can discover their voice, their heart, their passion, and hopefully their profession. So the video show is happening down at the DC Convention Center for the next two days, beginning today. And we're at the live streaming booth, uh, which is a video show and Tiva Enterprise collaboration. And like all good collaborations, it's good to shout out to all your partners. So we are beginning today with a discovery at Discover Video. And I am talking here with Mr. Rich, and I said your name earlier, Mavroganis. You did it. Uh, Congratulations. There you go. Well, I, I'm sitting in this chair for a reason. <laughs> um, but no, I just, I'm excited because we're beginning our first interview with you, sir. And so what is there to discover at Discover Video? Enterprise video. So okay. a lot of the discussion about video nowadays has to do with video over the public internet. Right. You know, streaming video on the public internet. Like and we're doing now. Like we're doing now, right? Yeah, but yeah. but um, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of activity for streaming video inside the enterprise, whether it's for education and training, the uh, corporate CEO webcast, sometimes yeah. called the ego cast. You know, the CEO has to be seen by everybody all the time. Um, and there's a whole different set of issues and technologies that uh, we bring to bear right. for enterprise video in schools, corporations, and government. So that's that's what we're, we're about. So can I substitute the word enterprise with in-house video? And what's yes. the difference? <clears throat> well, yeah. so certainly enterprise tends to be inside one building, right. and you can use certain technologies like IP multicast and, and bandwidth is less of an issue inside one building, but in a large multinational corporation, you have thousands or hundreds or, or even a few branch offices. Maybe you have an office in Hong Kong and yeah, London. And right, right, right. So you're going to perhaps hybridize this and use a little bit of the public internet as well, and that's a whole other set of challenges. So let's, let's break it down uh, to task-specific sp production activities. So yep. discover are you turnkey? Do you, you start with yep. a script? Do you begin with no, a blank no, we're, piece we're of paper? No, we're a product company. Okay. We sell stuff. Gotcha. Okay. We, right. So, so we, we uh, uh, sell uh, and provide probably the world's best encoders for the uh, enterprise. Okay. okay. So okay. we have a little product called Scorpion reducing here at the show. So you're in booth 300. Right. And we're across the street in 301, right? right? So we can watch your interviews live, right? We don't even have to use the, use the internet to view them. Um, okay. So we, we could do that with a Scorpion or a Spider encoder or our, our various appliances that we have. We have software encoders that we sell. And then the, the, uh, the heart of the system is what we call DBOS, which is a server system okay. that you put on the enterprise, either software or hardware. You know, we have no axe to grind. Or a cloud service if you want to do it on the cloud. And this gives you all the conditional access. This gives you the live streaming, the video on demand. But unlike internet video and, and perhaps what you're doing right now, it also includes things that the enterprise needs. Digital signage. How do you put right. signs all over the enterprise? You're at the front lobby, the back lobby, and the classroom. Do these are dig digital presents you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah. we yeah. have a little device called Sign Stick. Just a, as the name implies, a little stick. HDMI, plug it into a TV, okay. and it connects to our system and delivers live video, right? Interesting. We also have something called priority alert. So let's imagine there's an emergency. God forbid in a school, you know, a shooter, right, or a lockdown situation. Right. Somebody can press a button and live video or video on demand, or for that matter, a text message or a web page will automatically appear on everybody's computer without user action. Yeah. And all of the digital signage displays can change to show the important message. So I guess my point is, in an enterprise, there's a very comprehensive set of things that right. revolve around video that need to be done, and we do them all. So let's, I'm going to break it down on two levels. One's going to be a 101, then we're going to go to post-grad. Okay? Oh, good, so, good. So, yeah. so, let's well, so today at 2.15, I'm giving a post-grad lecture here in the, one of the uh, sessions. Oh, okay, so, it, so it, do we know which studio it's going to be in? Six. Six, studio six, so at 2.15. Yes. So people still have time to sign up for that and oh, come yeah. by? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, let's go basic. So what does an encoder do? <laughs> I hate to ask that, hey, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it takes yeah. a signal and turns it into you know, something else. Yeah. But what does an encoder do? So uh, why, do, why does someone need it? So without, uh, 
I, I want to say an encoder encodes, but that would be really right, flippant. Right. It's not very helpful. So when you take video yeah. and you digitize it, you have a bunch of ones and zeros. Yeah. Well, let's just take HD video as yeah. an example. If you're going to take HD video and digitize it, you're going to end up with over one gigabit per second of ones and zeros that yep. you have to deliver in order to view it. So does your ISP give you one gigabit per second of bandwidth? Yeah, probably. They say they do, probably, yeah, but, <laughs> right? It's reliability and yeah, all that. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. so in order to faithfully, in order to deliver video in any reasonable way, you have to lower the amount of ones and zeros that are going to be delivered. So to do that, you encode it. Right. You use what's called MPEG, MPEG-4, yep. also called H.264. Yep. You can use other technologies as well. It's a codec, well. but a, if, a, if a you codec. don't know what an encoder is, you're not yeah. going to know what a codec is. But, but, but they, basically what you do is when you digitize something, you can throw away all of the data right. that you don't need, so you have less data. That's called compression. So encoding compresses the video to put it in a form that you can more reasonably receive. So, without a doubt, it's essential, and it, it, and it, it makes it makes the thing work. Yeah, so right now, you have viewers viewing live right now. Hi, everybody. And, and, and when you're viewing live right now, I guarantee you, you are viewing compressed video. Yeah. Probably H.264. You're probably viewing it with HTML5, because yeah. Flash is all but dead, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially since Google Chrome you know, removed it. Right. Um, so people are viewing live compressed video right now. So let's take it up. So what what is the encoder you have found that is the the magic key? What what have you found the best in the in the industry? And why does why does what people would get from you be a better choice? Sure. So um, when we talk about compression encoding, it keeps on getting better almost every day. So it's not like you have a pound of H two sixty four, right? Right. So all H two sixty four is not created equal. We keep learning new tricks, new ways of making it better. But unless you are a um, encoding a Hollywood movie, unless you are really agonizing over the quality of the video, for the most part, we're interested in just putting video to work. So simplicity, right. reliability, ease of use yeah. tends to dominate the discussion more than the quality. The, the quality keeps getting better, but you kind of need an eye loop you know, to discover the dis difference, like you have this new H.265. So to bring a stereo phrase, it has to be solid state. Sure, sure, right? it has Is to be it, solid can we, state. Can we borrow from that era? Yeah. Sort of. Yeah, I okay. guess. Okay. Yeah. So give me just a... Although I'm old enough to remember vacuum tubes. I used to work on tubes when I was a you know, there you go. Okay. young man. Um, but it, we're all, it's all about, you can say, maintaining a connection to an evolving technology that yep. makes it simpler, safer, faster, better, yep. more efficient. Yep. It, it used to be, I mean, at this show, Government Video, now the video show, at this show, a lot of the excitement, I go back to NAB, right, right National Associate Broadcaster, um, 1990. Eight or nine, Steve Jobs gave the keynote presentation. Wow, okay. And the theme of the show was convergence. Someday yeah. video is going to go with computers, someday in 1998, right? And, and that was a lot of excitement, a lot of the discussion, yeah. and the discussion was a lot about the technology. Right. We have less technology discussions today. It's interesting, yeah. and you should know it. But we tend to talk more about applications and use cases because the technology is there now. Yep, content right? and audience, yeah, you know, and yeah. accessibility, yep. and all that kind of stuff. Content is king. But for us, the content tends to be the teacher right. giving the lecture, right? Because we do lecture capture, or, or it's a, um, I tell you, for a live video, one of the most heartfelt, amazing <laughs> things that, that, that I see every day is we have thousands of schools, K through 12 schools, that right. use our technology. The kids every morning stand in front of a camera microphone and give the live morning announcements. They do a TV show every single day and broadcast it throughout the school, yep. but also to parents who can watch it on their cell phones right. or in their workplace. So that was going to be my last question and you just answered it, is give me a real life example of a typical user, but that's a perfect one. Yeah. <laughs> because you've got, you've got the enterprise, you know, but then you've got, I guess you've got, I don't want to call it buy-in, but you've got, um, connect in from beyond the enterprise. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, you have, going back to the definition of the enterprise and the internet, a typical customer we have might be, uh, there's a very large uh, school district in Texas, for example, uh, Fort Bend comes to, to, comes to mind, or Lamar School District. I mean, these are enormous school districts that have 50 schools in the school oh. district, all interconnected, and hundreds of classrooms, or thousands of classrooms, and thousands and thousands, 50, 100,000 students in yep. the organization. Yep. And each one of them has got to be able to create and upload and deliver their own video, and it's got to be done in an authenticated, safe way, and it must not be connected to the public internet for, for, for privacy, reasons. security yeah, yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so enterprise is a big thing. Oh, I understand it. So I want to say thank you for joining us here at the TV booth. You are our first uh, May I ask you? flagship. Sure, go ahead. Tell me about Television Internet Video Association. Sure. Well, the Television Internet Video Association is a 30-year-old organization of professionals in media production that serves the regional uh, community of Delaware, Pennsylvania. Those are our outliers, but we still count them. Uh, Virginia, Maryland, and D.C. Mm. So if you are involved in any aspect of uh, producing content, making content, creating, broadcasting content, um, live events and whatnot, we even got uh, we even have composers and musicians. So it's an organization that supports that community with monthly panels and educational opportunities. Awesome. We have the yearly, um, this will be our upcoming 23rd annual TIVA Peer Awards, which is Emmy level recognition of excellence and achievement. So it happens once a year, yeah. happening in March of this year. So we're a support organization for the professionals in the industry, and that's why we're here today. Fantastic, well, right. that's, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and I've got already got a tickle in my throat. So <laughs> we, I'm glad you came by to find out. Discover again is at booth 301 yep. at the video show at the DC Convention Center. Come on um, down. Exactly, come on down. What I'm saying we're gonna come back in just a few minutes with yet another interview. If you are watching and think, maybe I should come down to this, this event, the answer is yes. Come down and check it out. There's all kinds of panel discussions going on um, all day, today and tomorrow. And check out Booth 300, the Television Internet Video Association, the video show streaming live, video booth. This is Todd Clark, and we'll see you in a few minutes.